Hello and welcome to Giant Mess, a sloppy sports and entertainment talk show that covers a little bit of everything. From the New York football giants, the New York baseball Mets, movie reviews, TV show recaps and reactions, comedy, 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 life lessons, life stories, you name it, I got it. Hosted by a giant mess, that's me, the real cinch Neil Lynch. I'm an Irish Italian American. Graduated from a Catholic high school, but is not Catholic. But damn, does those Catholicism run still deep in through these veins. And then I earned a couple of overpriced degrees from an overpriced research university known for producing doctors and lacrosse players and, uh, 0 for 2 there. <laughs> Definitely not a doctor, although I am not afraid to give my medical recommendations here and then, here and there. And I'm not a lax brow, brah. On today's episode, I'm going to talk about my visit to Rhode Island. The greatest little state. I don't know what the state nickname is. It's sad. I used to live there for like three or four years. Still don't. Still can't remember. The uh, Ocean State? There you go. Oh boy, that brain's still working on yours, huh? Uh, I went to Rhode Island to visit my grandmother, 94 years old, and uh, I believe she wants me to binge myself to death on food. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what her MO is. Me and, the, me and my daughter, we went to Roger Williams Park Zoo. I also got to connect, reconnect, my best friend from growing up, visited his family. Then there was a kind of an unexpected two-night stay in Hoboken. Why? Huh? What? Why? I'll tell you about that. And then I, I turned 42. Yeah, it was my birthday last week. I turned 42, and I feel like I'm 82 at this point after all the traveling that I've done and all the things I've put into my body that are not good for my body. Not feeling 42, feeling 82. So with that, let's get it started. And yeah, yeah. What a couple of weeks. I didn't have an episode last week. Uh, couldn't fit it in, mostly because my daughter was sick. Uh, she had a 104-degree fever at one point on Tuesday night. I wasn't with her on Tuesday night. I picked her up from Mother's on Wednesday. And so Wednesday was my birthday, November 9th. Uh, turned 42 and uh, celebrated by watching my sick daughter. <laughs> and then Thursday, kept her home from school again. Um, Temperature was not 104 degrees that entire time, but she felt warm to the touch, had some rosy ass cheeks. And so I figured might as well play it safe and keep her home. She's had a cough, some kind of residual smoker's cough for years now. I don't know that she's ever gone a day without a cough. <laughs> so I don't know that coughing is really a great indicator of whether or not she's not feeling well. I think she's just, she just figures like that's life. You know, that's how you know you're a human. You cough. It's like breathing, drinking eating, sleeping, and coughing. That's those are the major pillars of life. Uh, that's all she's known is illness <laughs> so far. I feel like I feel like most of the kids that I know, that's just what, what their life is. Just like, oh, well, it's like if they're not sneezing, coughing, blowing their nose, then then they that's then they're sick. <laughs> like they're sick if none of those things are happening. Like normal, regular to them is phlegm and mucus flying around everywhere. So, uh, but before she got sick, and maybe this is the cause of her sickness, we we decided to take a trip up to Rhode Island, uh, Cranston, Rhode Island, where my grandmother lives, to uh, pay her a visit because it's been a long time overdue, overdue time, long time coming. Last time my grandmother, who's ninety four years old, saw my daughter was maybe a few months after she was born in twenty eighteen, and then uh, you know we kept saying, "Oh, we're gonna make it back up there. We're gonna get it back up there. We're gonna get back up there." back when we were uh, a complete entire whole family. <laughs> and then the pandemic hit and any opportunity or chance to go up there, even during the pandemic or when the pandemic or when things were starting to loosen up restrictions and whatnot, it's like, well, she's in her 90s. Immune system probably isn't great. We have a kid who's constantly sick. Maybe not the best of ideas to go up there and see her and possibly uh, end her life. <laughs> I mean, there's no other way to put it. It's like, you know, it's, you know, we're it's very delicate, fragile territory, and I don't want to be the one that tips the cup, if you know what I mean. So we put it off, put it off, put it off, and then, uh, of course, I get uh, divorced. And uh, eventually I was just like, all right, I have to make this happen, all right? Especially after the scare she had. She had a scare this past spring right around her birthday, uh, with some issue with her stomach, she had to have like two feet of her intestines removed. Holy, I mean, like, you know, you're putting like odds together. Odds were not great, you know? And I think that my uncle, who was kind of boots on the ground for that entire experience, was, you know, saying that, you know, um, 
he had a very he kept it very positive and you know but there was that chance that like okay she might not make it and not to our surprise she's she's a freaking warrior she just i mean she doesn't act you know she start she's now starting to to behave and act like she's a, a woman in her 90s god bless her but i mean there was a long stretch of time where it was like she's texting she's on social media like she's not you know your typical octogenarian or senior citizen so um but she pulled through you know complications left and right another surgery was in and out uh, in rehab in the hospital for four four months something like that and i eventually it was just like I was checking in with my uncle every day, and then eventually I was like, "I gotta give this guy a break." I assume, you know, he'll he'll hit me up with any news, anything that changes. But was just very complimentary about how strong she is, the ability to go through that whole situation, and even the medical staff, the nurses, the doctors, all just in awe of this this woman who was able to pull through and persevere. And uh, you know, it's just a testament to what your will can be, you know, how strong that is. So we, I was like, I got to get up there with, with Brielle. I mean, it's been three, four years now. So we made the trip up there and uh, got in kind of late on that Friday. And uh, she, <laughs> my grandmother had this entire, like humongous spaghetti and meatballs dinner with salad and the, and the works. And it's like, it's just the four of us. Like there's no reason to have this, catering hall budget for two people i mean brielle's not gonna eat anything because my daughter's not gonna eat anything because she's been snacking like a, a friggin' animal uh in the in the back seat which this was our first long road trip you know i mean uh most times when i drove when i drive down with her to south carolina overnight I, I do it overnight so she can sleep so i don't think she's you know to her the the ride to South Carolina is like an hour, you know, because she's up for an hour and then sleeping for eight or nine. <laughs> it's like she's just like, you know, oh, tri- you know, you're they don't live far away. They live like an hour away. Meanwhile, this one was not overnight. And this is, you know, the, the drive there was about five hours. And so I got the iPad set up correctly this time, had all the appropriate connections. By the way, fuck you, Apple, right in your goddamn eye for 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 all the hoops you make us jump through. Every single one of those freaking hoops, dude. Just why, dude? Why? I under, I mean, I know why. I get it. Capitalism, I get it. But like you just you just make life so much more difficult. Um <laughs> so finally got the iPad set up correctly and she was able to to uh watch that while I while I drove away five hours on a Friday night. We got in spaghetti meatballs dinner. And then even after that, I had like two or three helpings because I know she's not, my grandmother will not rest until I am just like sweating food out of every pore in my body. Just there needs to be like spaghetti coming out of my eyeballs and ears. Just like it, she will not rest until I am so bloated that I can't move. And then I don't know, she'll rob me. I don't know what the, the, the end goal is there. Uh, watch me pers- Watch me expire and then cook me. I don't know, you know? A lot of weird thoughts going through the old noggin about her intentions. Like, uh, you know, I'm not happy when I'm this full. I don't know. You know, that's not (laughs) I'm actually in pain. (laughs) Like, I can't. I'm about to burst. That does that make you happy? Okay. Sick fetish, dude. So, yeah, she uh, she loves to feed me. And a bit of a night owl too. her and my uncle who lives with her. Another uncle. Not the uncle who was kind of making the the commute from New Jersey to to keep tabs on her and make sure everything's okay. Uh, another uncle who lives with her, they're night owls. So like you know, nine o'clock dinner is ain't no thing to them. You know, I was worried we were gonna get in too late, and then I remember, no, these people don't sleep. They go to bed like the break of dawn. So we ended up staying up, and I, I'm like, I'm exhausted. Brielle's exhausted. <laughs> She's all loopy, and so it's eleven, eleven thirty, and I was like, oh, we gotta. We gotta go to bed. <laughs> so, slept on the the pull out sofa bed, which is always a delight. And uh, you know, woke up the next morning, got some nice breakfast, and then it was on our way to Roger Williams Park Zoo. I, as I mentioned, I used to live in Cranston for three, four years when I was ages eleven to thirteen. And my most vivid memory of Roger Williams Park Zoo was the polar bear, which. I haven't looked too. F- I haven't dug too deep on this, but the polar bear. There was a polar bear there that would swim up 
and he would do it's like he was doing laps he would swim towards you where you're the glass partition between you and the polar bear underwater you know it's underwater so you can see him swimming and he swims towards you and then he kind of does a, a little flip turn he presses his paw on the exact same spot every time and then pushes his way back and, and he just does laps and and as kids we're like oh this is so cool he's swimming and he hits the same spot like put your hand right there oh he just high five you and then uh as you get older you learn oh no he's like legitimately insane psychotic creature that if he ever <laughs> breaks that glass he is tearing everyone apart <laughs> um and so i think he either passed or was moved to a mental institution <laughs> i don't know but uh, the polar bear was not there this time Instead, uh, in his stead, in his place, there were otters that were basically doing the same thing, except doing a lot more twisty, turny move maneuvers under the water. But they would do kind of come up to the glass and then they'd flip turn and kick off using their legs to push off uh, in the other direction. So I'm sure the otters are uh, mentally unstable as well. What was most interesting about the zoo was the fact that my daughter mostly did not. She's four. She did not care too much about the animals the most excited she got was like for a water fountain which is just and i get it i mean i remember being in epcot center or wherever and you have like the dancing water fountains the ones that just shoots water here and there and you gotta guess like where it's coming from and you catch it in your hand or you block it or you know that kind of stuff this wasn't even that this was just there's a straight like wall that was had water pouring out of it and she that's the attraction that she spent most of her time on. It was like water. I'm like, it's like you've never seen it. Like we don't live in the Mojave, dude. The Sahara, when that's not where our primary residence is. You've seen water. What is going on here? People are going to think that I, I just don't give you water. Uh, like, I don't know. So she was more interested in that. And, but I mean, we got to see elephants, giraffes. Yak, uh, otters, of course. I don't know. I mean, I think we got a, a turtle, goats. You know, we got to see a, a fair range of animals. We did not get to see any bears, which kind of stunk. We did get to see camels. We got to see a cheetah. I posted a video about that, a reel about that. That cheetah, dude. Oh my god, that thing. It must have been new because the other cheetahs. There were three cheetahs in this cage. I think two of the cheetahs were just napping. They're just tired. And then this third cheetah was just pacing back and forth at the fence. The fence that divides them from, like, uh, all these other creatures, like non-predator creatures, like food, basically. And he was just pacing back and forth. Like, the moment this fence comes down, it's on, bro. I'm going to feast. Um, so that was scary yet entertaining. And cheetah is also one of my daughter's favorite animals, so I think she was somewhat into that. And then the other attraction that she's into, not... Again, not animal related. It was just like the activity center. That's kind of like in to the side, to the back, where it's like you can paint with water. <laughs> Yet again, that water uh, really hits, slaps with uh, my daughter. And she would get so upset because it's like you're painting with water, right? It's, it's like, it looks like a chalkboard. They give you a bucket of water and a paintbrush. And you can paint with the water, and, it, and it's cool, but the, the water dries, and then there's nothing there. And it's like your artwork has disappeared. And my daughter, for the life of her, was it was the most frustrating thing that she's ever experienced. And I'm like, it's, ah, you know, it's kind of like, this is the thing. Like, this is how, you know, this is just how it is. I don't know how to explain it. It was a giant xylophone. She got, she got rocking on that, posted a reel of that, and, you know, bought her a stuffed animal. She went with a, a white wolf. I think it was the uh, the animal she went with. She was leaning towards the tiger and then went with the white wolf. Cool, 25, 26 bucks, no big deal. And basically was just feeding her pirate booty. I mean, the amount of pirate booty, well, it wasn't pirate booty. It was Trader Joe's version of pirate booty. So it was like these cheese puffs things. She went through almost an entire jumbo bag herself. If you If you count like snacking in the car, snacking at the zoo, it was like demolished an entire bag of this cheese puffs veggie straws fig newtons like that's all she ate basically this entire trip um so you know it was the activity center and then it was it was that water fountain and that was that was about it i mean we got to go through uh see some snakes some fish and uh i don't know i think she enjoyed it 
we were there for like three hours and an hour of those three was at this activity center place where it's like you could literally do this at any place <laughs> you don't have to be at a zoo to participate in these activities but you know whatever floats her boat dude if it's if it's making her happy then then great good good for you so we like i said there for about three hours the weather was incredible it's like in the low 70s low to mid 70s the entire weekend which i did not pack for my weather app decided to just conk out so i packed as if it's going to be cold it's the northeast it's rhode island it's it's early november like it's going to be cold right so I pack as if that's the case, and I'm, and my weather app's not working. I'm like, ah, what are the odds? You know, it's probably not, you know, it's going to be cold. I get outside, the weather app is now functioning 70s. And I'm like, ah, great. I have nothing packed that is uh, going to be suitable for that kind of temp. So I had to I'd run back inside, just grabbed all kinds of shorts and shirts and stuffed it in a bag and was on my way. But that uh back from the park roger williams park zoo stopped for a late lunch with my my grandmother who made it made a sandwich for me uh i feel so bad she, and she feels bad that she's not able to do because she's wheelchair bound now can't really stand for too long doesn't walk you know gets gets around on wheelchair and everything sounds and looks painful you know and she makes sure to make note of that to me like my knee hurts all the time this hurts all the time. I'm in pain. I hurt. I hurt. And I'm just sitting there like, did you take your pain meds? <laughs> like, There's not a whole lot I can do for you. You know, I, I just I, I I would be so pissed if I were her age and having to wait for things. <laughs> it's like I don't got the time, dude. Like she ordered this electric wheelchair and it came and it was just wrong. It didn't fit or she, you know, it didn't allow her to stand up or move or go to the bathroom or whatever. And now she has to return that, and then she has to go to like this warehouse to get a new one. But she has to set, get schedule an appointment to do so, and it's like weeks from now. It's like she can't even push herself in the wheelchair. <laughs> what the fuck? She had to schedule uh, some kind of CAT scan that was like weeks away, and I'm like, weeks away? You told them your age, right? Like this is. <laughs> and then there was uh, she's scheduled to hopefully can schedule. Uh, to get a shot and injection in her knee so that her knee won't hurt so much. Just like all of these things should be happening tomorrow, if not today. Like, why are we waiting three weeks for all this to go through? Um, but kudos to her for being able to, you know, I, I can't, I can't imagine. Oh boy. So late lunch there. And then I, I, you know, I haven't seen my best friend from growing up in a long time. You know, I played baseball with him. Uh, I was over his house constantly as a kid to the point where I, I think his parents were probably on the edge of uh, like losing me in the woods permanently. <laughs> like It's just, you know, because I was over there all the time, all the time, especially in the summer that they must have they must have been so fed up with me <laughs> like this kid is draining us. In every possible sense of the word, <laughs> like financially, physically, spiritually, emotionally, like this kid needs to go. But uh, they they tolerated me for whatever reason. And uh, I'm very appreciative of that because it was some of the best years of my life. And so uh, it's nice that I got, he was a groomsman at my wedding. And uh, just, it, you know, like I haven't seen him since my wedding. And go over there and it was like, didn't skip a beat. We have not skipped a day. And that's that's just... Uh, that's a, I mean, that's that's a lifelong friend right there. So um, doesn't live in Cranston anymore. Lives uh, up north, Rhode Island, close to the Massachusetts border. And so I was like, all right, well, I don't want to drive because we're probably going to, uh, you know, bend some elbows, you know, intoxicate a little bit. So decided to get an Uber. <laughs> and the Uber uh comes and it's gonna be like 40 some odd bucks something like that for a half hour ride which uh, you know honestly is not that bad but both of these uber drivers to and fro uh they i don't think they have kids or they give a shit about kids because <laughs> like i don't have a car seat i didn't bring a car seat with me maybe i should have brought a car seat that's on me I wasn't thinking clearly but you know uh i lead the the you know brie gets in and maybe this is a child endangerment so i'm gonna stop right there How's that sound? She's safe, okay? She's safe. She made the trip. <laughs> no harm, no foul. But, uh, you know, I mean, I was a nervous wreck the entire time. So I, I 
would imagine I can't understand why that's not a more prevalent thing. I guess the odds, you know, I guess not many parents do that, but it would be nice to, you know, have that option, you know? It's just like every Uber driver is equipped with a child seat, regardless of, you know, how many rides they get. I don't know. Or you could just pay it. Like, hey, uh, you need a car seat? I have it, but it's going to cost you a little bit extra. All right, fine, cool. So made the trip up there, and uh, they have a humongous husky who's uh, named Roscoe, who this thing looks like a wolf. I mean, I, you know, I remember third grade, my teacher was like super into the Iditarod for some freaking reason. This Alaskan dog race, like just weirdly, weirdly obsessed with it. No other teacher or school or anything has ever brought it up ever again in my entire life except this teacher. And I remember like, I think Huskies were the dog du jour, like the dog of choice for the Iditarod. And so that was my my exposure to that. But again, I was third grade, I was probably eight or nine. Like I haven't seen I don't think I've seen a Husky. Like I was a big fan of the Washington Huskies in eighth grade, used to wear their paraphernalia, the merch rock that shit. But like in terms of seeing and feeling and looking at a a Husky in person, this is it. This was it. And uh, I can tell you, looks exactly like a wolf. (laughs) Exactly like a wolf. And my buddy's like, how does she do around dogs? And I'm like, "Uh, small dogs. She's okay. You know, I don't, she just hasn't been exposed to really big dogs. I think everywhere we've gone, everywhere we've been, because we don't have a dog, we don't have cats. Everywhere we go, it's just like a medium to small dog. You know, dogs that she could take in a fight, you know. If it were a wrestling match, I, I get my money's on her. Uh, even though she doesn't have a lot of hand-to-paw combat, I think that <laughs> she can hold her own against a lot of the medium to small dogs. This dog is, I wouldn't even call this dog large. This dog is excessive. Like this is a, this is a a big and tall dog, you know. This dog, uh, you know, heavyweight champion of the world, world hit, world heavyweight champion. And so uh, I was excited to see her reaction because I don't think she's ever seen a dog this big in person. But also, she's a big fan of wolves, and I was like, this is as close to a wolf as you're probably gonna get. And so she was a little timid, understandably. I mean, my buddy was sitting in a chair and he had to have the, he had the leash, you know, the dogs on a, in a collar on this leash and the leash is probably like six foot long. And he had that thing wrapped five, six, seven times around his arm. Like the only way that this thing is going to eat your baby, <laughs> eat your daughter is if it rips my arm out of the socket, which is very possible. So keep, keep, keep on your toes, uh, for this, for this, uh, monster and eventually it settled down but whew, i would not that's like you want to talk about the worst ways to die it's like in a fire drowning I, attacked by a wolf or a bear animal attack has to be up there <laughs> i think that's got to be worse i don't know but eventually the wolf <laughs> the husky tired itself out and was able to lay down and she was able to pet it so that was that was good she got that in but oh boy like there was a point where the dog was let outside and they closed the screen the screen door but not the you know not the glass sliding door and it jumped and you could see it like rake the screen door. And I was like, I can't believe that screen. That's the pretty solid screen door that you got there. You got your money's worth because that, that thing ran its claws down it multiple times trying to get in and, uh, and withstood the pressure. So we, uh, we ended up ordering Mexican. I ordered a monster burrito with steak and shrimp, no rice, no beans, extra steak and shrimp, even though that didn't really say extra steak and shrimp, it just, the, the option was, Meat inside. That was the checkbox. And I was and, it, and the next checkbox was meat on the side. And I was like, huh, okay. Well, I'm gonna go meat inside, see how that see how that works out. And uh this thing showed up. It was the size of a baby. It was the size of my arm. My at least from my wrist to my elbow, I'd say. That was the size of this monster burrito. So they weren't they weren't joking around i think a lot of a lot of places as a gimmick as a, as a goof they'll be like oh monster burrito and it's like oh, this is the size of a, maybe a burrito 1.5 burritos <laughs> like this is not 2.5 to 3 burritos and uh, i could only finish half and i i felt like my buddy also kind of went all in on the on the dinner order which i appreciated but then his daughter who's like 15 and is i think could be a model i mean she's like tall skinny like ridiculous and i know that's absurd to say about a 15 year old but i mean like when do most of these models get their start huh? usually those scouts 
as perverted as you think they are, as creepy as they are, they have an eye for that kind of thing. And they usually pick him out at an early age. And I was, I was like, yeah, she, she could be a model. Um, so she ate next to nothing. And then her boyfriend shows up and he's real thin. And he he's like, oh, I'm not hungry. And the dog... Roscoe actually jumped up and snatched his case of diller and ate it. And uh, <laughs> so I was like, well, that's going to be an interesting night. We got a husky with uh, foreseeable gas issues. <laughs> and then I'm just sitting there with a monster burrito, like going to town on this thing. And, and, and I can't imagine what these two teenagers thought. Like, oh my God, is this what's in, in store for us when we get older? We're just going to like house ridiculously portioned foods. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, really appreciated that, you know, a teenager like her was able to entertain a four-year-old for that long. And I guess she has an affinity for youngins and oldins. Like it's strictly people in their diapers, I guess (laughs) is the best way to put it. It's either like very young or very old. She, uh, is, uh, doesn't hate like she does everyone else, um, or can tolerate more. So she ended up entertaining Brie and I, I wish Brie was like a little bit older so she could tell me what exactly was going on, you know, in that room. But, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm assuming she won't be scarred for life. And then their their son uh, made a, a cameo, a surprise appearance, not surprise appearance, but he popped in for a little bit. And uh, it was good to see him and, and talk with him. But just overall, just uh, I wish I I mean, th- those are the kind of people that like make you want to. Uh, be near them and with them at all times. So it's like, I would love the opportunity to just pick up and move there and be like, okay, well, this is, these are our friends and we're going to see them every other weekend. I'm sure they don't want to see that much of me, but it's like, I could do every weekend. If you guys are in for every weekend, I'm, I'm, I'm in. So, but it was interesting to see because, you know, they have older kids, 15 year old and 20, 21 year old. And uh, to, to have a four year old back in the mix, I think that part of them was feeling uh, very nostalgic about that. Of course, Bree didn't eat her quesadilla, and so they had some chicken nuggets on standby, which is like the go-to emergency break in case of emergency glass situation. When in doubt, nug it up. You know what I'm saying? Nug it up. We did get to watch the World Series finale, and most interesting to me for that was the post-game interview with Justin Verlander, where he's there with his daughter, and Kate Upton's off camera, and then eventually the kids like you know, screaming, mommy, mommy, mommy. And so she comes on camera and then Big Poppy, David Ortiz, asks her the question that's like, yeah, you know what you're doing with that question, Big Pop. It's like, oh, so are you, do you want him to retire or do you want to see him play another season? Like, <laughs> this is a, this is definitely uh, a stab at the Tom Brady, Giselle bunch, bunched in story angle. And so, and then she knocked it out of the park. She was, I mean, she kind of, she almost went overboard it was like i i want to i want him to be happy i love watching him do what he loves to do he's an artist and i love watching him you know a master of his craft and i was just like oh damn dude kate upton is going all in on this and it's it's great to see um and i don't know that you you get to see that much more anymore not to like dive too deep into it but it's like i understand both sides Tom Brady and Giselle. I understand both sides. It's like, hey, man, you said you were going to retire. You retired, and then you came out of retirement very quickly. You also said that you you also didn't tell me that you were talking to the Dolphins. So there's a lot of mistakes on Brady's side, okay? At the same time, it's like logistically, realistically, you know he's not going to be able to play until he's 50. And even though you thought last year was his last year and he won a Super Bowl with his first year in the Bucs, and, and at that point you think, okay, you proved your point. You don't need Belichick to win a Super Bowl. You are the greatest quarterback of all time. You've proved that you don't need the Patriots to win, blah, blah, blah. You, you, you kind of start to – it starts to wear on you a little bit from Giselle's standpoint. But goddamn, it's just – if. God damn. And that's, I mean, that's, and then, I mean, you got to know who you married, right? A little bit. Like this guy loves the game of football, loves it. And if I had to, if you had to do rankings of like his loves in life, football's one. <laughs> like, and then you have to go bop, 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 down all the way down the list. And then it's like wife, children. <laughs> like that's just who he is. So I don't know that he's really changed all that much to any degree other than his physical appearance where he looks you know everyone's saying he looks like Skeletor but I'm like it's just pliability baby that's just what you look like when you're pliable (laughs) but I you know he wants to play and if he and he's like and I think you can say this about a lot of 
uh, legends in the game, professional athletes. Like if they have the physical ability to go out there and still produce at some level that is uh, acceptable to not only to not only the team and the organization, the league, but to them personally, they're going to continue to do it. I would have done it, dude. If 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 someone wasn't like like I, I mean, you know, I know it's I know people are scoffing their freaking boobs off right now at me. Because like to think to think to think that I'm comparing myself to Tom Brady, but dude, when I when I was told junior year in college, like the head football coach calls me and is like, uh, "You are not welcome back <laughs> at training camp. You are not welcome back to the team." We we were asking a bunch of people to not present themselves, to not show up to camp, and you were one of them. I freaking cried, dude. I was only 19 at the time, so it's like 19. I got at least like three four years of playing football in me at least that i know i can do i took that very hard so it's like you know if someone hadn't told me you know baseball was a situation where uh you know i tried to keep i took a hiatus for about three or four years from actually playing and pitching and then try to get back into it and my my arm was like what uh whoa dude my arm was like giselle my arm was like no 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 dude (laughs) we've been through this you're done you finished you stopped and now you want to get back on into it? <laughs> no. And so my arm just uh, would not cooperate. So I think if I have the physical ability to still play at a level that is like people are still willing to watch me <laughs> or I'm still getting enjoyment out of it, I'm going to do it. So I, you know, and I understand, I understand the point of view of, well, Tom's missing out on his, the, his family's life and miss, missing quality time with his kids. I get all that. Um, but you don't know, I mean, we just don't know all the ins and outs of it. I mean, personally, if I know that that's going on in my fam- with my family and my wife's pissed about this, I'd be like, I'm going to try to incorporate them as much as possible into what I'm doing. You know, and some would say, well, that's a little selfish, narcissistic, okay. But what's the alternative? Like, they just, they don't, they aren't at the facility, they aren't at the stadium, they aren't, you know, at practice, they aren't doing all these things. We're enjoying what you do for a living. like. You know, there was that uh what was that that Buffalo Bills cornerback who had a concussion, couldn't fly, but was cleared to play, so he rented an RV with his family and they drove to the game, which was like eight, ten hours. And he's like, I I I I loved every minute of it, but I wouldn't do it again. It's like, you know, and you have NFL co- head coaches. I think Coughlin did this. I'm trying to think of another one who did this, but they they have the fa- they know that they're gonna work long hours. <laughs> and so they're like just come to the stadium, come to the facility. I can hang out with you from here to there. You can meet so-and-so, you can do this. Like you make an activity out of it. So it's, I'm not saying one's wrong or one's right. I'm sure they're both in the wrong. I'm sure both have valid arguments and reasons, but it's like, it's kind of like, damn it, dude. If Tom and Giselle can't make it work, like top supermodel, one of the highest earning supermodels of all time, top quarterback top of his league top of his game probably should be the highest earning quarterback of all time but like for the betterment of the team decided to not you know he took pay cuts and whatnot can't make it work <laughs> and maybe that's maybe that's the point is like two alpha dogs you know they they both they both at the top of their game i don't know that they can maybe they just can't coexist you know you do need an alpha and a beta you need a yin and a yang you need that um kind of support system like i i so it was and I'm sure there's all kinds of people that are like, oh, you're chauvinistic piece of shit. Because I saw that Kate Upton World Series finale post-game, press, post-game interview, and I was like, man, that's refreshing. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's my bias. Because I came out of a relationship where it was like, uh, I support you, quote-unquote, but I don't support you. Like, I've supported you for too long. I'm like, it's been fucking two years. <laughs> like, yes, this is a rough period. And yes, I, I have pretty much not met expectations and have disappointed you but like it's a long haul it's a long run like we're talking i was viewing it as okay we're gonna be together for 50 years hopefully i mean 50 is tough because like we we got married towards the in our 30s you know so like 50s would be great but like 40 years 30 years i mean that's what i'm looking at in terms of the relationship so if it shit sucks for like two or three years, it's like, oh, well, that stinks. But like, you know, there are ebbs and flows, ups and downs, dude. Gutters and strikes. Shout out Big Lebowski. So, you know, I, it was just refreshing to see that. Like Kate Upton is no schlub either. Like she was a top supermodel. Like she's been at the top of her game, you know, and yet she's she's supporting her husband like that. So that was like, I got a little, I got an emotional uh, watching that. 
because that was just it was just it was just good to see and i i know some people probably made fun of her for it but whatever dude i think it i think it's great just to see that because there are so many times where and you see this in like not just real life but tv shows movies where it's like you're so wrapped up in your job all you care about is your job your work but what about your family it's like well yes there are instances where uh you know that person is at fault and uh they need to have a better work-life balance there's some jobs where you can't really get that going and it kind of comes with the territory and it's like if you were involved in that when you got into the relationship to begin with and when you had all those discussions and conversations and as it as the relationship went on, like, uh, you kind of freaking uh, knew that. So <laughs> did I sign up for... Now, when I met my uh, ex-partner, she was working at a place where she had been there her entire life. She worked normal hours. She was going to be a partner. And I was like, wow, we're set up for pretty good success here. And then all of a sudden she takes this other job where it's like hours don't exist. <laughs> it's just like working all the time, working on weekends, working when we go away to a friend's birthday party, working when I go visit my family, work, 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 where to the point where you prefer work over coming to bed and sleeping with your partner. You know, maybe that's part of what was going on with Tom and Giselle, where it's like he's he's he would rather watch game film and take some reps with his trainer, personal trainer, than he did uh, spend time in their marital bed. But I know it was a long ass rant about Verlander and Upton, but it's just to me that gave me I liked it. I thought that was cool. And was it, 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 I don't think it was a direct shot at Tom and Giselle, but like everyone involved had to know what was going on there. Like it was a direct commentary or, or it was a ricochet shot at Tom and Giselle. Hey, maybe you want to open this before you sleep. But uh, yeah, so we were, my buddy and I, we were, we hung out for probably a good seven, eight hours. You know, it was midnight by the time I uh, got the Uber back and this Uber had uh, like protect seat protector on on his uh, back seat so it was like i could was able to to get brie buckled in and safe and secure and then i just he just took off and i could not find my buckle so i'm sitting there holding her hand and i and i have a couple sailor jerry's in me and i'm just like if this is the way i go that's fine <laughs> just like that's how dark it can get it's just like if this is it for me <laughs> You know, I feel for my daughter, but uh, I know that she's safe and like, it's just nice to hold her hand as that's the last thing that I experienced. <laughs> so stupid, Neil. Woo. Gets real dark, real dark. But it was like a fuzzy dark. It was like, I feel all warm and fuzzy. And if this is how I go, so be it. <laughs> it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't, uh, it didn't feel dark. It was just like, you know, whatever. So if you're an Uber driver out there, just like, can you take two seconds? To make sure I'm all bu- we're all buckled in and all buckled up. Like I don't know that a minute is gonna cost you that much dough, bro. So next day, we, so we didn't get home till like twelve thirty in the morning. So I mean, Bree was I mean, my daughter was just <laughs> not operating on a lot of sleep, and I, I have a feeling that's what caught up with her, and that's why she got sick. It's just like you know having to deal with that. She's not her body's not used to that. Um, but uh, yeah, so we drove home Sunday. And I'll say this, it doesn't matter if you're thinking about having a kid, if you have a kid, maybe this happens to you. The later a kid goes to sleep, the earlier they wake up. It does not make sense. It does not compute or four. The earlier they go to bed, the later they sleep. How does that work? I don't know. But the clocks turn back and I'm thinking to myself, well, OK, we got to bed late, but at least we get the extra hour of sleep. She's probably exhausted. She's going to sleep in. Da, 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 and she's like, nope. She was up at like six or seven. Daddy, it's wake up time. And then I'm like, oh, no, dude. I'm no, no, no. Like I'm, I'm, I'm swimming in Sailor Jerry's. It's trying to leave my system and I'm not letting it. And, <laughs> and no, no. And then that's when she started with, I want mommy. And I'm like, ah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm up now. Way to go. You just, you know, just how to grind my gears. You, just, you know how to turn the knife, don't you? I want mommy. All right, I got you. So had a nice breakfast and um, put together like a puzzle, which was cool. And then we played this weird fishing game. I don't know how we have this fishing game, but it's from France. It's French. It's all in French. And it's, it literally is, is the most realistic fishing game I've ever been a part of because the rods were just entangled the entire time. Like I spent the entire time trying to fix these freaking rods. <laughs> so uh, very accurate, very realistic 
in terms of uh, in terms of that. Ended up doing a crossword, and then uh, you know we ended up leaving around four or five and getting home around eight. And then uh, you know a friend called and wondered why my kid was up and eating dinner at eight thirty nine o'clock, and I was just like, you don't do you have a kid? No, okay, shut the fudge up dude and then monday morning that's when she's my daughter was not feeling well she had the rosy cheeks she felt warm to the touch i took her temperature multiple times with digital digital thermometers which i think digital thermometers are a scam at this point i don't think they work i think it's a i don't know why they were invented or why anyone actually believes in them but i just don't trust them at all and she didn't have a temperature so i dropped her off at school and you know the 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 director or whatever at this daycare you know immediately noticed her rosy cheeks like rosy cheeks huh and i'm like mm-hmm, she's just really she's just she's shy she's blushing yeah yeah she's just so she's blushing so happy to see you and she took her temperature with a digital thermometer which i don't even know if that things work that thing works it looks like a gun and they point it at the kid's head and then they just rapid fire pull the trigger on the thing which can't be the way that you operate it and there was no temperature so i was like all right i guess my job is done here <laughs> I hope you feel better, Bree, and I'll see you Wednesday. And then, of course, uh, that's when she goes home with her mother, and she has the 104-degree fever. And so uh, I ended up, but it was like, that's, you know, part of the the pros and cons of being divorced. Like, it's like, well, you know, I love her, and I want to see her be better, and I want her to get well, but it's kind of out of my hands at this point. It's now your problem, which uh, it's a crappy way to look at it but it's kind of like the reality of the situation so i free on monday and tuesday night you know i received a job offer i accepted a job offer it's my it's my birthday week so i was like i'm gonna celebrate i think i deserve it you know for all the for all the doom and gloom that i i put myself through and it's all internal strife no nothing externally happening but it's all internal like why 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 i was like i'm gonna go up and visit some friends in hoboken maybe go out to dinner you know just hang out and i gotta say so I, I drove up there Monday night and I, I decided to drive, which I got to stop doing because like that parking garage is just out of control expensive. It's just it's just obnoxious. I mean, I, you know, tw- what was it 24 hours? I was in that friggin spot. And I know I sound like an old man yelling at those gosh darn clouds. But for the love of God, 70 some odd dollars for 24 hours of parking. Three dollars a freaking hour. Is that the math? Is that math correct? I don't know. I just. I just, ugh. so I, I, but then again, the, it's, you know, probably an hour, a little over an hour drive. If I have to take public transportation, the way that I can do it from, from where I am to Hoboken, it's like, you can take the train to Newark. That can be an hour in itself. Then you have to get on the path, which there's a transfer at exchange place. And then you get to Hoboken and you're at the Southern tip and you got to go the Northern tip. And it's like, like you can do an Uber, you can do a bus. The bus is going to take a cool 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. And then the Uber is, is the Uber, you know? So I was like, I'll drive thinking like, all right, I'll stay the night. You know, they have some space. I'll stay the night. And then, uh, so went out to a, a very nice dinner. It used to be a place called Clinton social, which is where we, I mean, I watched the giants win the NFC championship against the the Niners there. I know the exact seat I was sitting in it is no longer Clinton Social. It's now this Italian place called Il Tobolo de Palmasano. Um, tremendous food, Italian food. And, um, you know, picked up a Pinot Noir and a Malbec as a payment for my stay as a nice little, like, you don't want to show up empty handed. So I, I brought that, I bought that. And of course, it was immediately called out by my friend's wife, <laughs> who, uh, nicknamed Monster and uh was very monstrous in her assessment of my wine selection was like what the fudge is this dude why is this in my why is this not only like not only is like why is this in my apartment like i don't even want it in my apartment that's how uh poorly i think of your your choices i mean i picked side uh, uh it was a wine label with the name sideways i i, I thought okay there's a movie named sideways so they must know what they're talking about and then the other one was uh, some Malbec from Argentina, no, Australia, Argentina. I don't know, one of those countries. And I didn't even get to try that. But I did have some Miomi at dinner. Miomi is, uh, even though it's my ex-partner's, my mother's, my daughter's mother's <laughs> favorite wine, it's like, well, it is pretty good. So uh, even though I, I try to put a ban on anything associated and affiliated with her, it's like, well, I can't, I can't quit you, Miomi. You won't divorce me, right, Miomi? <laughs> oh my god. 
had some burrata. Well, first of all, we took an Uber from uh, a friend's place to the restaurant, and uh, <laughs> I looked at the the license plate. So you know how they give you the license plate, the name of the guy, and the driver, and then the license plate. And the license plate, I thought it was an error, or I was like, well, this is a coincidence. Druber, D-R-U-B-E-R. Druber. And so I in, in my head I looked at it and I thought, oh, Dr. Uber. So like, what are the odds that this guy is like a doctor who just loves money and, and like doesn't know how to stop working? And so this is what he does when he's not in surgery. <laughs> when he's not in the OR, he's out there um conducting surgery on them streets, just slicing and dicing those streets, those roads. And uh turns out no, he's his name's Drew. <laughs> it's just like just like the movie Stuber, where it's a guy named Stu and he's an Uber driver, like this is the same kind of shtick. It's like his name's Drew, Andrew, and so he goes by Drewber. But uh I was like, I think you should lean into the Dr. Uber thing and you should probably like wear a stethoscope and uh what are they called? Scrubs. <laughs> And like that that mirror thing that you never see on doctors anymore. And uh, he said he'd take into consideration. I had a nice little collabo suggestion, though, because, you know, I want to do some research on this restaurant that we we're going to because it was my choice. Right. I made the reservation. And there it turns out there's a YouTube video that profiles it, features it. And it's hosted by a guy I used to work with at SNY. This guy. And I don't want to I don't know if this is doxing. I don't think this is doxing. But he's the son of a prominent deli owner in Hoboken. And I've, I've mentioned this deli multiple times, Bianca Manos. You can get a sub that, we're, you know, we're talking about that monster burrito that was the size of my, basically my forearm from my wrist to elbow. This sub is from my wrist to my shoulder, 20 bucks. Like that, you, one of the, has to be the top deal of all time in any place, in any universe. Like it has to be. The bang for your buck you get with that kind of sandwich is, is priceless. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It lasted me an entire weekend where that's the only thing I ate the entire weekend. And <laughs> it was satisfying and fulfilling. Anyway, this guy, uh, in addition to his job at SNY, hosts this like series called The Pulse with uh, Peter B. So I guess it's not doxing if he's already out there and doing this kind of stuff on YouTube. I don't know. But he's a very gregarious guy, very talkative, and like um, puts this video, puts this series podcast show to shame because he's got like graphics and stuff and he's got like multi-camera setup and he conducts these interviews. And because he's kind of, um, I would say, Hoboken food royalty, is that, can I say that? (laughs) He's able to to land uh, interviews with these owners and proprietors in Hoboken, and uh, you know you get a pretty good sense of how the restaurant's going to turn out and whatnot. So got to go in the in the back, got some burrata, which uh, I'm a big fan of, arugula salad, which was was nice. You got it. I kind of got away from ordering salads at dinner, and a major mistake, no bueno, because the salad <laughs> is does wonders for. Your digestive system, one, I think, any nutritionist I think would agree with that. But it's also a nice little, I guess, a palate cleanser, a change of pace, whatever you want to call it. It's a, it's, it's a welcome addition to the lineup. And yeah, it's maybe not necessary, but it is, you know? So I decided because I was eating with a vegetarian or a pescatarian, I should say, that I didn't, I felt weird about ordering like a meat dish. I didn't ask them like if they felt weird but i was like well i probably should err on the side of like let's just not go meat and i don't need meat there was a period in my life where it's like i need meat at all times every sitting every session every feeding but now it's like i don't think i need the meat i think i can get by without it so i decided to go with a shrimp and risotto and uh had like a little pesto flavoring to it which was amazing i mean i i just fucking love pesto it's just like not healthy, but has some dirty martinis to kick it off. That's always a good kickoff, always. And especially if the other person is doing it too, because it's like, all right, now we're in this together. I know that you're in my foxhole. You're ready to do battle. Let's do this. We've both got d- dirty martinis. Let's 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 go. It's gonna be the. This is the beginning of a great night. And then eventually you switch to the the Mayomi wine, which was also uh, awesome. So uh, just a, a great dinner. I highly recommend it. Hoboken also Mondays are tough for going out to dinner. A lot of places closed on Mondays, so it's a very limited offering. And uh, but I I loved it. Great restaurant experience. Great conversation. Great all around.
And then we went went back to my friend's place and we watched The Cutting Edge, which I am very familiar with. I think a lot of people are familiar with if you're of a certain age. And uh, I loved it. <laughs> I, I really did like it a lot. Um, you know, it's one of my, my buddy's wife's favorite movies. She was a, a figure skater growing up. My ex-partner was a figure skater, so it's like, you know, trying to steer clear of a lot of things that remind me of her, but this was hard to ignore, and uh, I'm glad I watched it. D.B. Sweeney, who kind of reminds me a lot of Paul Rudd, and then I, I forget who the the lead actress is, but I'm surprised that she didn't, uh, She had maybe she did more stuff, but I don't know that she did. But it's like, 40 rich, elitist, uh, northeastern girl, Connecticut maybe, with a hockey player who's kind of... Uh, because of some kind of his eye situation, like he got his eye got hit with a slap shot during competition in the Olympics. And so, uh, you know, a lot of teams are passing on him now. Professional teams are passing on him. And so he then uh, gets lured into the world of figure skating where he partners up with this. And he's he comes from, you know, uh, humble means. You know, he's not, I think he's lower middle class maybe you know, needs a job. And so he decides to take it. And it's, of course, it's like, you know, the, the, the lady in the tramp style where it's like, you get the rich person with the, and the other side of the tracks guy and, uh, some great scenes, you know, great chemistry between the two of them. And, uh, uh, a lot of great lines and dialogue. I mean, it's so late eighties, early nineties. And, uh, I feel like that for me was such a golden period of cinema (laughs) because it's like, Cheesy and corny and campy, but also, you know, it's hard to look away, that kind of thing. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed that. Slept on the couch, and then I thought about leaving early that morning because, like, my friends had work. You know, I'm, I'm, I, you know, newsflash, I'm out of work. I'm unemployed, so I don't, you know, I spend most of my days either working on this here pod or, you know, I'm just uh, inane research that doesn't matter that will not impact my life whatsoever. (laughs) Just going down those wormholes, those black holes, those rabbit holes of just like going down a lot of holes, looking up stuff and researching stuff that ultimately is like, why am I, I'm like an hour or two into it. I'm like, why why am I doing this? How is this benefiting my life? You know, I could be doing things, making moves with all this free time into stuff that will actually make a positive impact on my life. And instead I'm, you know, I'm looking at like, ugh, such crap. So I decided to stick around on Tuesday, but it was like, my buddies are working. So it's kind of weird to, because, you know, this is probably the first time that I've done that where I'm not working. You know, usually it's like, I'll be working, they'll be working, and like, we're working side by side, and it's fine. This one's like, they're working, and I'm just kind of hanging out. And I was like, I'm not sure if I can watch TV, so I didn't watch TV. (laughs) It felt like I was just being a complete nuisance. You know, I think one of our friends wanted to go to Mark Wahlberg's there's like a new Mark Wahlberg gym, gym in Hoboken, F45, where it's like kind of like HIT training, high intensity impact interval training, whatever, but like more casual or more realistic. It's not so much of a cult or something like that. And, but you would have to pay, you know, and hey, I, I guess I'm a Scrooge, okay? I'm a Scrooge. All right. I could have paid 45 bucks for like a week trial or something like that and just go the one day. But I was like $45 for 45 minutes of working out. I don't know. I just don't know. And so, of course, I passed on it. And I think that was a major mistake. Um, But, you know, we ended up going out to dinner that night, a place called Serenata. It used to be Maxwell's. And now it's Serenata, Serenetta. And uh, we walk into this place and it reeks stinks of like spoiled seafood <laughs> like we just walked into this is, I, I i guess tuesday monday and tuesday are probably the worst days to go to go out to a restaurant because everyone's they're just like out of everything or everything is like on special because they're trying to get rid of it <laughs> you know like i it, it, yeah so it, that was uh it was a tough stench to get used to and eventually you sit in it long enough and it goes away but it does, it does that first 15 minutes is pretty tough to to stomach or to nostril, if you will. So, I mean, we eventually got used to it, but it was like, can we open a window in here or something? And and also, should we be eating here? Maybe we're going to we're going to get something that uh, is like on its last legs or maybe has uh, <laughs> maybe is better suited for the dumpster. But uh, had oysters, Caesar salad. I had halibut for the first time. I've never had halibut before, which is kind of nuts. And uh, I dig it. I like it. I don't know that there's 
you know, I don't know if it's like, oh, that's that isn't my new favorite fish, but it's like I can see that being part of the rotation now. Also had a drink called Pantera Rosa, which I believe translates to Pink Panther. Uh, it's like a tequila with some kind of mixture that made it pink. I don't even know what the uh, strawberry. No, this is something, something red or pinkish that uh, took the edge off the tequila, and it was so goddamn good. And then these jokesters. <laughs> You know, my friends, they decided to, while I was going, uh, visiting the facilities, decided to get me a, a surprise dessert after I said, no, I don't want any dessert. And of course, they got me the little little dessert for my birthday with the candle. Fortunately, no one sang, thank God. And uh, because I, I don't know that anyone really enjoys that. <laughs> Does anyone really enjoy it when people are singing happy birthday to you or the even the people sing it so the people singing it aren't enjoying it and then the people who are singing too not enjoying it so it's okay we can skip it i think the dessert in and of itself with the words happy birthday written in icing or whatever is a okay like that that passes the test and we went home and watched all the election results <laughs> which i thought was uh was a great way to end the night with like, you know, all these results pouring in. Um, one of my college, what do you call it? Peers? I guess you would say he was my year. Wes Moore went to Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland. Played football with him. You know, I, I mean, as that's like as loose as you can get with that saying. Because it's like I was on the roster. And he was on the roster. I think he saw the field more than me. He was a wide receiver. I was a uh, seventh string quarterback. But then worked my way up to fourth string. No big deal. And uh, he was a, a wide receiver. He got to see some time on the field and uh, didn't really hang out with him other than that. But I know that every interaction I had with him was very positive. He's just a very positive guy. And uh, he, I mean, even then you could tell, okay, like it's not shocking what's happening with him right now. Like he just won, he just became governor of Maryland. And it's just like, you look at his resume and you're like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, and everyone's like, oh my God, you went to college with a, you know, guys, the governor of Maryland and like, I wouldn't be shocked if he goes on a run for president. He's only 42. I think he's 42, 43. And if Wes Moore, like just keep that name in your in the back of your head for the next 10, 12 years. Cause I, I have a feeling in the next 10, 12 years, you're gonna see his name pop up as a as a potential presidential candidate. I mean, he's just like that kind of guy, you know. I think you you spend one minute talking to me and you're like, okay, this guy's no future. <laughs> like he's just uh he just wants to have a good time, party, and I get it, and like have fun with that. But you talk to Wes, and and it's just like, oh, you are just leaps and bounds beyond anyone uh, of our age or any other age. Like you just okay. So yeah, my birthday, my actual birthday, Wednesday, the next day, the ninth, was just spent watching my my sick daughter, and uh, opened. I get to open some gifts. I opened a gift for my sister and brother-in-law. They got me a nice humidor with like a cool lighter that looks like a friggin' lightsaber. I got some pouches. Apparently you need to put pouches in your humidor to keep it like a certain climate. And then a thermometer that you put in the humidor to make sure you're, you're maintaining that temp that's needed for the, the choice, you know, perfect optimal settings for the, uh, for the cigars that the three cigars that I have. And uh eventually you know was able to 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 track down the package that contains uh the cutters the cutter that you need for the cigar and on all the other uh stuff that goes along with it the fuel maybe the butane fuel that you have to put in the lighter of course amazon continues to deliver it to the wrong address so that's always fun trying to track that down um and then uh that night i had a night terror because i had a cupcake <laughs> so it doesn't matter how old you get i mean how freaking uh, uh appropriate suitable how fitting is that i've turned 42 and i still suffer from a sleep disorder that is primarily and mostly found in like children <laughs> so if anyone you know wonders like why does he act like a kid all the time like he has he just he just can't he's, he refuses to grow up it's like well i i blame it on the sleeping disorder <laughs> yeah I'm pretty sure, and this is what gets me, is like I let Bree sleep in my bed because I was like, she's sick. We usually do it once a week anyway. It's fine. Like, and, you know, uh, I've had a long couple of days. She's had a long couple of days. Let's just, let's just get in bed, go to bed early, and that's that. And then I had this, like, ridiculous night terror, and she just didn't wake up. <laughs> it's, just, it's just unreal. Like, I, I woke up in the middle of it. I woke myself up, which is rare. But I did where it, it just, you're like hallucinating. 
Like I was, I was looking, I'm laying on my bed, I'm looking out uh, towards where my desk is. And I just start seeing like all these things kind of looked like the, the vapor trails from Morbius <laughs> were like, uh, I don't know, hard to describe some smokiness with some glittering. And, and it's like, is this a ghost? Is it a spirit? Like what's happening? And I think I actually said that I was said like, what the F is happening? Screaming it out loud. Um, and she was just uh, snug as a bug in a rug, dude. Didn't move a single solitary inch. <laughs> The entire time I'm like freaking out and having a night terror at the age of 42. Okay. So, um, took her temperature the next morning was like around a hundred degrees. So I was like, all right, obviously not going into school. So we ended up doing, uh, there's this thing called koala crate and, uh, they have a bunch of projects and I keep getting these koala crates and I keep saying, oh, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. And I never get around to it. And I was like, all right, well now's as good a time as any. Cause I can't have her watching TV all freaking day. Uh, like I did on Wednesday, <laughs> where it's just like, you don't feel good. I don't think you want to do much of anything except just sit there and watch TV. Let's just have at it. So she's feeling a little bit better on Thursday. So broke out the koala kate crate, made a barn tote, farm animal finger puppets, a veggie garden, stained glass art. We went, we went full on project mode, and uh, I've never been prouder. And yet, all those projects. So I did, I named four, I feel like we did five or seven projects, took about like an hour. <laughs> like, why is it when you try to entertain your child one-on-one, -on -one, you feel like you do so much and you look at the clock and it's like an hour goes by and you're like, oh my God, I feel like this has been half the day. And yet you watch TV and that, and you could watch like 10 episodes of something and you're like, oh my God, it's been five hours. Okay. All right.